This is English 101, uh, week 13, part 6. It's going pretty good. Um, so she's going to keep talking about this experience at the club, um, which is an experience of, of joy. Um, it's certainly being – It's sometimes if you go – another place you see this isn't concerts. It's, worth, it's sometimes if you go to a really good music concert and just like everybody is together and you're just really feeling the music and you just forget about your life and your problems and everything. And it's like a very intense kind of thing. That that, that can be joy. Um, I myself am not a big music person, so I, I, that's, I'm probably a bad person to describe this. I've probably only experienced that maybe once in my life. I'm not, and I'm not a big – I care about other things. Um, I'm really big into movies, books, but not as much into music. Um, all right, let's go see what else. So she's going to keep telling the story about being at the club and wandering around and dancing. She says, then suddenly I could hear Q-Tip. This is a weird guy's name. Um, she says, suddenly I could hear Q-Tip, blessed Q-Tip, not a synthesizer, not a vocoder, but Q-Tip. I mean, because a, a synthesizer and a vocoder are like robot sounds that are coming from the DJ. Then suddenly I could hear Q-Tip, blessed Q-Tip, not a synthesizer, not a vocoder, but Q-Tip with his human voice rapping over a human beat. And the top of my skull opened to let human Q-Tip in and a rail thin man with enormous eyes reached across a sea of bodies for my hand. He kept asking me the same thing over and over. You feeling it? I was. My ridiculous heels were killing me. I was terrified I might die, yet I felt simultaneously overwhelmed with delight that Can I Kick It should happen to be playing at this precise moment in the history of the world and was now morphing into Smells Like Teen Spirit. I took the man's hand. The top of my head flew away. We danced and danced. We gave ourselves up to joy. Um, I really like that description. of I, I felt something so strongly the top of my head flew away. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a common, Emily Dickinson once said that poetry, really good poetry should take the top of your head clean off. It's a kind of, again, it's experiencing something so intense and so wonderful that you just feel changed by it forever. Um, and that's what she's, that's what she's describing in the club. So let me, uh, all right, cool. So let's, let's keep going here. Um, years later, while listening to a song called Weak Become Heroes by the British artist The Streets. And again, you can put these into YouTube and listen to these songs if you want to. Years later, while listening to a song called Weak Become Heroes by the British artist The Streets, I found this experience almost perfectly recreated in rhyme and realized that just as most American children alive in 1969 saw the moon landings, nearly every Briton between 16 and 30 in the 1990s meant some version of the skinny pillhead I came across that night in fabric. The name The Streets gives him is European Bob. I suspect he's an archetypical figure in my generation. The character Super Hans on the British TV comedy Peep Show is another example of the breed, though it might be more accurate to say Super Hans is European Bob in old age, 40. Um, I don't remember the name of my particular pillhead, but I will call him Smiley. He was one of those strangers you meet exclusively on dance floors or else on a beach in Ibiza. They tend to have an inexplicable nicknames, no home or family you could ever identify, a limitless capacity for drug taking, and a universal feeling of goodwill toward all men and women, no matter their color, creed, or state of inebriation. I, I, uh... Okay, so I'm going to include a clip on this lecture at the end of the lecture. You don't have to watch the whole clip, but it's like a nine-minute clip. Um, she, she's, she says she met this guy. Um, who is like a druggie, who's just like a happy weirdo druggie, that he's not going to assault you. He's not going to steal your stuff. He doesn't want to have sex with you. He just is on, he just, he's just a drug guy and he's just happy to be there. Um, he just, he just feels good about everything, man. He's just like this weird drug guy. Um, I, I, I'm going to include a clip. She, she mentions that he's like the character Super Hans from Peep Show. I'm going to include a clip of Sue. I, I know the show Peep Show. I used to watch it uh, years ago in England. Um, it's a strange show. You've never seen it. Um, but I'll, uh, um, I'll, I'll include some of his bits. Just You don't have to watch the whole 10-minute clip with Super Hans in it just to get a sense of what the hell she's talking about here. But it's just like a dude in a club who's doing drugs and is just so happy to be there and happy to see everybody. And, man, are you feeling it? Like, just he just wants everybody to have a good time. But he's also just doing a lot of drugs. Um, and he's not dangerous to be around. In fact, he'll take care of you. Um, but it's just a certain type of like happy stoner. 
I think it's possible that if you've seen the movie The Big Lebowski, Lebowski is an example of this. Although I think she's talking about someone who's doing harder drugs than Lebowski's doing. But the general sense of goodwill towards all men and man, let's just let's just do some drugs and be cool, man. Like this is great, man. I'm having a good. Are you feeling it? I'm really feeling it, man. Like that kind of guy. Um, I don't. There's a level. She has a really high level of detail here that, like, I just. The point is, the thing about this essay is you got to understand the difference between pleasure and joy. Now, she's giving these examples. Now, the way she does this, they're very detailed examples. I don't know if you need to understand all of the details in here. It's like a lot of detail. It's more like a novel than an essay. Um, it's like an autobiography or something. Um, I suspect it would be better if you were her age because you would know what she was talking about more if you were a British person that was also her age. Um, you're going to have your own exp – the point is, is these are her examples of pleasure and joy. You may have – you're going to – are for sure going to have different examples of pleasure and joy. Uh, the important thing is you just get the basic idea. No one is testing you on these examples. People are testing – you're going to be asked – you're not, probably not going to quote a whole paragraph of this nonsense about her being in the club and listening to Smells Like Teen Spirit. Um, you're, what you're going to do is quote what she says about pleasure and joy and the difference between the two, and then you're going to talk about that. So don't get – if the examples are losing you a little bit, don't worry about it. Let's come up with our own examples, right? Okay, cool. Um, all right, let's see what we got here. So on the bottom of page three um, – their most endearing quality was their generosity. She's talking about these kinds of happy drug people. For the length of one night, Smiley would do anything at all for you. Find you a cab, walk miles through the early morning streets looking for food, hold your hair as you threw up, listen to you complain at great length about your parents and friends agreeing with all your grievances, though every soul involved in these disputes was completely unknown to him. Contrary to your initial suspicions, Smiley did not want to sleep with you, rob you, or con you in any way. It was simply intensely important to him that you had a good time tonight with him. How are you feeling was Smiley's perennial question. You feeling it yet? I'm feeling it. You feeling it yet? And that you should feel it seemed almost more important to him than that he should. So, um, I, I, and also, by the way, this kind of person, I, I don't know. I don't know if you know people like, if you know people like this, this is easy. If you don't know people like this, it's slightly hard to explain. It's partly a person who just enjoys doing a lot of drugs, but when they do drugs by themselves, it makes them feel like a drug addict or a bad person or lonely or something. And so what they really want to do, all they want, they don't, they're not, they don't want to, he doesn't want to rob her. He doesn't want to have sex with her. He just, he wants other people to do drugs with him. So, because I don't know how to put this. If you know the al alcohol world, people go to bars and they drink with friends. And that's considered socializing. But if you drink a lot at home by yourself, people feel people feel like the difference between an alcoholic, and this is, I think, not accurate, but people think the difference between an alcoholic and a non-alcoholic is that if you're drinking with friends at a party, that's okay. But if you're like drinking a lot by yourself, you're an alcoholic. And so what a lot of people who are alcoholics do is they try to go to a lot of parties because they feel like, well, I'm at a party. I got to drink at a party. Whereas if they're just like having eight beers in one night at their home, then they're an alcoholic. Right, so they try to joyfully get other people. You know, people at bars. They're like, "Oh, I got the next round. I'll pay for the next group of beers," because they they want to drink alcohol, and they feel like if they do it by themselves, they're an addict or a bad person or something, and so they want to do it with other people. So, so this character Smiley or Super Hans or European Bob or whatever we're calling him is a guy who does drugs, and he just he's friendly with other people. Because he just wa he wants the company so he doesn't feel like an addict. He's just like, I'm having a good time. Are you having a good time? It's like that kind of thing. Because if he was by himself, he'd be like, man, am I a drug addict? And he doesn't want to think about that. That's my psychological analysis of this character. You probably don't need that. This is a hard thing to this is a hard thing to teach because she's doing a lot of detailed examples, and I feel like they're sort of confusing if you don't know what she's talking about. But also, they're not that important to her point, which is the difference between pleasure and joy. Okay, I'll pick this up in the next video.